If you're an IT student and you're doing your PAT, then this video is going to just tell you about the resources that you're going to need to give you a head start on your PAT for IT. So there are three very important documents, the actual PAT document, which we'll talk about now, but then there's also my PAT guide and my progress tracker. And if you've got those, it's going to help you throughout this year to complete your PAT, not only on time, but to try and maximize the marks. So let's go check them out. So the most important document is going to be the actual PAT document or the guidelines for the PAT from the department. So make sure that you've got your one. This is the 2024 one. So whatever year you are in for matric, make sure that you've got the right document and make sure that you've read through it and made sure that you've checked out the topic. We post a video discussing the topic as well as the tips. Here's the one for 2024. But if you want to find the latest one, if it's not the year 2024, then just go to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long IT and Cat. Go look at our playlist and then you should find a playlist called IT PAT Tips and and there you should find the video for your year. The most important part which I think of the pattern document is the rubric right at the bottom. So here it is in this document and it tells you exactly how to get the marks. Making sure if you've got all of those you're going to get all the marks. So this is going to be what's going to help you get all the marks. I would strongly suggest you mark your pat before handing in a phase and look at where you would allocate yourself marks. And if you are short somewhere, then try to find out how you can maximize. If you're getting your, giving yourself a two, ask yourself, how can I get a three and four? Maybe you've got some time to quickly add something to help get those extra marks. If you're not sure, speak to your teacher and ask them, how do I move from this to this? And then they will hopefully give you some tips of how you can get those extra marks. So make sure that you're ticking off everything. It's almost like a checklist, but if you make sure that you've got everything, that way you'll get the most marks possible. Then the next document is my PAT guide. This is a document where I give you links to videos as well as other resources that can help you with your PAT. You can download this from tinyurl.com slash Mr. Long PAT guide RT and there you can place it on your phone if you're going to be watching your videos on the phone or if you're going to put it onto your computer. But this document be really useful to get examples of how to do the different aspects of the PAT. There is a progress tracker, which I'll talk about next because that's the next document. And there you can see the different phase one and phase two. So we're going to come down here. Here I talk about how to create backups because that's going to be very important. If you're not making backups of your work and something goes wrong, then you're going to have to restart everything. So there are some really useful tips about your folder structure as well as how to create backups of your pet. And then I have a whole series on the phase one about how to get started. There is a document template which you can download if you want to use that. But I go through each part of the different tasks, task A, task B, the navigation plan, and ideas on creating your PAT database, how to do your data structures and user interface. There are videos on everything here to explain it, as well as when you're thinking about your text files, how can you use text files in your PAT? There's a video there. How could you use an object in your PAT? There's an example of there. So that can help guide you with what you need to put into your PAT. If you're grade 11, then you don't need to do the object part, but grade 12s, you need to make sure that you've got an object. And then the RPO table. This is where most people lose the marks and it's got the most marks allocated to it. So really watch this video carefully and make sure that you're following every single step to make sure that you get the most marks for your RPO table. And then here's the checklist where you can tick off everything that you've done. Maybe you want to record when your due date is from your teacher. And as you do things, tick off, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. So you can see what you still need to get done as you get closer to that deadline. So there's the phase one. The phase two is all about coding. Now what I've got is a whole bunch of videos to help you with different aspects. They don't tell you how to do your particular pet, but they give examples. And maybe that's all you need is just an example about how to do a certain thing. So you might not need all of these videos, but they might be some that you need to use. So for example, talking about creating your database and how to do your relationships, there's a video for that. And then the most important part is connecting your database to your project. Now there are two ways you can use just the generic way of connecting the database, but I suggest using code or dynamic objects. And there's a video that takes you step by step through that process. It will really help you to make sure that your project is working efficiently. Then if you want to use multiple screens using panels or forms, there's some videos that explain that. With just a reminder about sharing between forms, those are very important videos. Some database features, for example, a login screen. If you can require your users to log in, I'll do an example of that. As well as the administrator part. You're going to have two different users in your PAT in, the, in grade 12. So that make sure that you have an administrator or another user aspect to it. I always suggest an administrator side of your program. And so you can show you things that only the administrator can do. Some help with databases and SQL if you need that. And then here we go. Some examples of text files, of creating a log file, examples of doing a dynamic object 
put in those project notes, some examples of there, how to use your try accept and the message DLGs because you need to put those in as well. You want to make your own icon. You want to use other features that you weren't taught in class like text to speech. Using a T chart or shapes to graph your data is going to be very important. I would recommend you look there. And so some really great videos. There will be some more videos that we add throughout the year. So make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel for that. But at the bottom here, you'll have your checklist, making sure that you've ticked off everything as you go along to making sure that you get all the marks you need. And then you can download your submission documents. Those are going to be your the documents that you sign to say that this is my work and you mention where you got help from. So I've made a digital version of them, which you can download so that you can submit them as well. And then the third document is this progress tracker, which you can download at tinyurl.com slash patch tracker. When you go to the link, it looks something like this. Now you can't edit this link, but you want to download your own copy so that you can edit it for yourself. So you do that, you go to file, go down to download and then download as an Excel file. If a box like this pops up, then you can obviously save it to where you want to save it, preferably in the same folder as your patch documents. If that dialog did not pop up, then you can always come over here to this little button where you can see where the download is in progress. And then once it's done, you can come over here and you can click on that folder to go to wherever it will be saved by default on your machine. And then you'll have your own RTPAT progress tracker that you can edit for yourself. It looks like this. It's basically a digital document which can help you keep track of what you are doing every lesson. So you can fill in your details. I would put in the date for when your teacher wants you to hand in your pat. And this worksheet is for the phase one. So the idea behind it is every column is for a different day that you work on the patch. You're not going to be working on everything on that day, but just certain things. So for example, on the 15th, we are going to say, okay, well, I created my folder structure and then you can say that you completed it or we're working on it and you still need to complete it. So we, that's going to be easy. We can do that in one lesson. So we completed it and we started our scenario and scope. Remember, you're going to probably do this at the end of the lesson once you know what you've done for that lesson. And then your teacher goes in the next lesson, maybe on the 16th of February, you're going to come back here and say, well, we were able to finish our scope now and we were starting our user requirements. And then in the next lesson, maybe on the 21st, you can say, well, we finished that and we even managed to finish our database design, but we didn't, weren't able to do the role. So as you go along, you can create this nice little structure to show you how far you need to get done. And this is going to be for all the different tasks for the phase one. At the bottom here is another place to fill in your work ethic. How well are you working in each lesson? So for example, we worked really well in that first lesson. So I'm going to give myself a five. And in that lesson, well, we didn't work as well, but we still worked pretty well. So I'm going to give myself a four. But this lesson, we slacked a bit. So I'm going to give myself a two. If you do that, you can keep track of your work ethic. And over here, you'll see your work rate. You ideally want to keep this above 80%. So when it starts dropping below 80, it means you need to up your work ethic, making sure that you are doing more work in class, making sure that you're maximizing that time. You ideally want to get fives and fours all the way through. Get, keep this at about 80% at the very least. And that way you'll be able to complete all the aspects of your pat. And then over here, you can see as you complete certain aspects, you will see how much of the progress you are done before you are 100%. And then yeah, at the phase two, you've got all the parts for, for your actual program. Now this one, you might not do from top to down. You might work on the array today and then in the next lesson, you're going to work on the databases. So this might be a bit more scattered, but it still helps you keep track of what you have completed and say, yes, I've completed that. And then on that day, and I also completed that on that day. So you can keep track of everything depending on which day you are in. And again, keeping track of your work ethic at the bottom. So it's just a way to keep track that you are doing everything and what day you did worked on different things. So you can actually have evidence for your teacher as well of what you did on different days. The last tab is just some links to our YouTube channel so that you can follow that to get the latest tips that we post there, as well as some ideas that we post on TikTok as well. If you would like a physical copy of this progress checker because you'd like to work on paper, then you can actually download the printable one at tinyurl.com slash tracker print and there you'll get a document like this which is exactly the same it's got all the same information but this is a more printable version so you can mark off if you've done something or where it's completed you can color in the blocks something along those lines and at the bottom here you can track your work rate on a scale so you can keep track of that scale and actually join the lines and see how well your scale is you don't want to dip in too much you want to keep it up here in the fives and the fours so that's page one. Page two will have your phase two and then some more links on page three. So there you go. Those are the documents that I suggest that you use to help you with your PAT. Make sure you've got your PAT document. Make sure you've got the PAT guide. Remember, you can download it at tinyurl.com slash mislongpatguide.rt and then your progress tracker. Make sure that you've got those documents so that they can help you when you get started with your PAT. 
Good luck, everyone, and I hope you get to showcase all your wonderful skills that you've learned in IT. Good luck for the pat. A reminder to subscribe to the channel at Miss Long IT and Cat to make sure that you don't miss any new videos that we post about the pat and more tips. Make sure you follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.